know, Mikhail is what I think he has two and a half years left on that contract. Several players who theoretically would be coveted by contending teams, but they also do not have full control of their picks. Would move Mikel Bridges. I would move oh, really? okay. everything I can. The Houston Rockets are trying to do the unthinkable and the unthinkable may even make a little bit of sense here. The trade deadline is a little bit more than a week away and things are about to heat up for all teams in the NBA. So before we get to the content, we're 10,000 subscribers away from 900K subs. So do me a favor and check to make sure you're subscribed. And now now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Super Bowl prize picks is blessing us with an easy way to make a hundred bucks. All Patrick Mahomes needs is one passing yard in the Super Bowl for a square to hit, which means he's pretty much a free square. First, download prize picks and use my promo code microphone when you sign up to get up to a hundred dollars deposit match on your initial deposit, and then make these picks really quickly before they change the lines on them. So for me, I'm pairing Mahomes' free square with Isaiah Pacheco, who's had at least one touchdown in his last five games, so that's easy, and Christian McCaffrey who has had more than 88.5 rushing yards in four of his last five games. Of course, I give away all my picks for free on Instagram, and I highly recommend you turn on notifications for my Instagram story so you can get the picks quickly before they move the lines and you lose your advantage. And thank you, Prize Picks, for the sponsor. Mic check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? Last year, the Houston Rockets were in a significantly different scenario as they are currently. If you remember during this time last year, we were making content on how the Houston Rockets had a significant amount of cap space, a very young core that features Jabari Smith, Kevin Porter Jr., and Jalen Green, and the chance to get Victor Webanyama with the number one overall pick. There were several rumors about them potentially luring James Harden back to Houston because who wouldn't want to play with this very very young core. And one year later, things have changed mightily. They didn't get Victor Webanyama. They brought in Dylan Brooks on a pretty good contract in addition to Fred Van Vliet. And they hired Ime Udoka, a controversial but very good hire that without a doubt changed the way Houston Rockets basketball is being played. If you don't believe me, currently at the time that we're making this video, the Houston Rockets have already matched their win total from last year, which is insane to think about. Last year, they were the second to worst team in the NBA in defensive rating. They were the fourth fourth worst team in offensive rating, and they were the third worst team in net rating. And this year, they're the sixth best team in defensive rating. They're 13th in net rating, but their offensive rating ranks in the bottom 10 in the NBA. Now I wanna make something abundantly clear. This is still a very young team that is progressing and getting better game after game after game. And you can see that primarily from Jalen Green. Now I know what you guys are gonna say. If you take a look at Jalen Green's statistics, he may have taken a huge step back. He's averaging 18 points per game this season, shooting 32% from three. A lot of people like to think of him as J.R. Smith 2.0, a volume streaky scorer that honestly plays meme-worthy basketball at times. But if you take a look at Jalen Green's statistics over the past five games, this man's been averaging 27 points, 7.2 rebounds, four assists on 47.4% shooting over the last five games. But again, he's a very streaky scorer. The seven games before that, he was averaging 15.6 points per game. But at the same time, this is still a basketball player that is nine days away from turning 22 years old and still has a long ways to go in his own development. With that being said, the Houston Rockets have turned around their roster quite nicely. The aforementioned additions of Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet in free agency, not to be overshadowed by the veteran presence of Jeff Green as well. And that's before we mention what they did in the NBA draft by bringing in Amon Thompson and Cam Whitmore. This team has an identity, but they feel like they're not necessarily there yet. They feel like they're a piece away. And this brings us to today's article, how the Houston Rockets rebuild is accelerating ahead of schedule with Houston star hunting at the trade deadline. And you guys already know on this channel, we're a huge fan of these types of videos. A lot of it is eerily reminiscent to what the Houston Rockets were saying about James Harden last year. Now, I know immediately what you guys might be thinking. Mike. If they're rebuilding with a young core, why would they want to star so quickly? Well, according to Sham Sharanya and Sam Amick of The Athletic, six weeks ago, Houston was 13-9 and firmly settled in the West.
West playoff picture, having won five straight games and thriving as the NBA's second best defensive unit. Since then, the Rockets have been hit with injuries at various points to the likes of Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., and Tari Eason, and the franchise has dropped 12 of its last 19 games. During that time, Houston's defensive efficiency has dropped to around league average, while its offensive efficiency has plummeted to the bottom 10. Well, it's really unfair to say this because a huge reason why this has been going down is because the Houston Rockets have been dealing with a lot of injuries as of late. Now, the article mentions the conflict that the Houston Rockets are having. Historically, the front office has believed every move or series of moves should be through the lens of winning a championship. And if this new look team showed signs of legitimate improvement toward that goal, even if it meant narrowly missing the playoffs altogether, that growth would be welcome. But Yudoka dating back to training camp last September made it clear that he was ripping out the old floorboard from their foundation and wouldn't be content with settling for what he perceived as mediocrity. Yudoka's appetite for winning is strong, hailing from the school of Greg Popovich in San Antonio and carrying that approach in Philadelphia, Brooklyn, and Boston. At one point, Yudoka was two wins away from winning an NBA title. His ambitions weren't suddenly going to change just because his working location did. This article brings back the James Harden rumors of last summer, bringing up how they brought in Dylan Brooks because of his two-way energy who became an early poster child of sorts when he signed a four-year $80 million deal with the Rockets in mid-July, and the decision to say no to James Harden, whose long-rumored reunion with the Rockets didn't happen last summer because Yudoka preferred the fit with Van Vliet, which was another strong sign that Yudoka's voice mattered a great deal from the start. And also, I guess Jalen Green had something to do with it as well. There's obviously been some links of James wanting to come back to the team. Mm. Like, I feel like at this point, you're the king of Houston. Yeah. Like, you got to go through this. You got to go through being double team, being triple team, you know, being the target every time. Yeah. You got to go through that. And you bring on someone like James, who's such a, a ball dominant player, like, that's going to hinder your yeah. growth a little bit. You Thanks. know what I mean? I agree. Regardless of how it can elevate you on another level of him teaching you and you learning off of him, I feel like for you, you've already been through the fire. So, like, let you continue to learn. You know what I mean? No, I agree. I yeah. think play both ways. Like you just said, it can help and mm -hmm. hurt at the same time. I didn't really talk to him too much about the rumors and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm with you on that. Now, here's where the meat and potatoes of this article comes in. And it also draws a parallel to our Ben Simmons video. If you guys remember, I mentioned in our last video on Ben Simmons, how Ben Simmons's contract essentially is holding the Brooklyn Nets hostage because the Brooklyn Nets can't tank because they don't hold their picks anymore. The Houston Rockets do. And at the same exact time, they can't compete because, well, their roster isn't good enough to compete in the East. Don't get me wrong. They have great players in Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, but aside from Mikel Bridges, most of these are very high-end role players, with Cam Johnson really being on the fringe of that. The only star that the Nets really have is Mikel Bridges. Cam Thomas periodically will have incredible games where he goes off, but Ben Simmons' contract is literally holding this team hostage. And we have a whole deep dive on it right here if you wanna check it out after this video. So why am I bringing up the Brooklyn Nets in this instance? Well, Shams mentions how Houston has been pursuing upgrades to the roster, searching for another all-star caliber type who fits the two-way mold that Yudoka is looking for, and the organization has the available resources to do so. The Rockets have four first-round picks eligible to be traded, two via Brooklyn in 2024 and 2026, and their own in 2028 and 2030. He mentioned some of the names that were brought up here, like Atlanta's DeJounte Murray, Chicago's Zach Levine, but I don't think either of those are going to help the Houston Rockets get to the next level, and Zach Levine's contract is a huge nightmare. So it mentions how the Rockets have joined the long line of teams showing extremely high interest in Nets forward Mikel Bridges. Houston made an offer including multiple first round draft picks for Bridges in recent weeks, but the Nets have zero interest in any deal involving Bridges, who is part of Brooklyn's core moving forward. And I'll be honest, I'm extremely surprised that they said no to this. I guess I'd have to see what the trade entails, but it's important to note that Mikel Bridges' contract ends in the 2026 season, which means you could get peak value for him right here. And this trade may makes incredible sense for both sides. Mikel Bridges will be a star on a team that actually has a chance at competing alongside Alperen Shangun, Dylan Brooks, Fred Van Vliet, Amon Thompson, Jalen Green, although I feel like you would potentially trade Jalen Green and the trade package would be based around Jalen Green from Mikel Bridges. And I know what you might be thinking, Mike, that's not worth it for Mikel Bridges at all. But if you get back the first round picks that were given up to get James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets back in 2021, 
one, you get draft control back. It gives you the opportunity to tank if you need to tank. It gives you a player that you could build around that actually fits the timeline of your contention in Jalen Green over Mikel Bridges. So I'm very shocked that the Brooklyn Nets aren't entertaining trading Mikel Bridges right now. And here's the crazy part. You know this is true when it's not only coming from Shams. According to Mike A. Soto, the Houston Rockets are interested in Mikel Bridges and are open to trading a combination of the draft picks acquired in the James Harden deal back to Brooklyn to facilitate a trade. Recently, the Houston Rockets were among the teams to register trade interest in Bridges, league sources told Hoops Hype. Houston was prepared to send back several of Brooklyn's unused remaining draft picks from the James Harden trade, but talks never got to that stage because the Nets declined to entertain anything for Bridges when Houston inquired. I just hope that the Brooklyn Nets don't fall into the same exact trap that the Toronto Raptors did by hanging on to probably the best available trade chip of the trade deadline for way too long because currently from where I stand, I don't see a way for the Brooklyn Nets to build a contender around Mikel Bridges. So if you have a great opportunity to leverage Mikel Bridges into four first round picks, which I don't think that's going to be offered, but if they do offer four first round picks for Mikel Bridges, you should take it, especially if it's first round picks in 2028 and 2030 from the Houston Rockets. And especially if it's your own first round picks, they will instantly become sellers at the deadline. What I'm envisioning a trade for Mikel Bridges looking like would be incredibly one-sided to even start, but I can imagine if a lot of Houston Rockets fans wouldn't like this trade. It'd be something like Jalen Green, Victor Oladipo, and four first round picks for Mikel Bridges. Now, I know on paper this looks like a terrible trade, but again, the Brooklyn Nets would get a guy that is significantly younger, that they could build up his value once again, the same way that they built up Mikel Bridges' value once he got traded from Phoenix to the Brooklyn Nets, and they could get draft control back so they could have a legitimate rebuild. This would expedite their rebuild by like five years instead of them trying to compete to become a potential play-in team. So I know the trade that the Houston Rockets have in place for Mikel Bridges is insane, but if you really think about it, it makes a lot of sense for both sides. And if you're a Brooklyn Nets fan and you disagree with me, please tell me, why wouldn't you trade Mikel Bridges right now? Because at the end of the day, you don't have assets to trade for another startup pair with Mikel Bridges, and you're not good enough to compete the way you are right now. He's also currently 27 years old, so this is his prime. But I've been wrong before. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about all this, man. Should the Brooklyn Nets trade Mikel Bridges to the Houston Rockets? If you want me to go more in depth on how the Brooklyn Nets don't really have a choice here, I highly recommend you watch our Ben Simmons video. I'll leave it in the end screen. And aside from that, I'm your boy, Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.